Inside Science. Over half the world's population live in a city, and that will be two thirds by the year 2050. But modern cities aren't like any environment that we've evolved to live in. So we need to ask, are modern cities clashing with the ancient design of our bodies and our minds? Are cities making us sad? Well, here's three ways that they can. Cities are very good at cramming a lot of people into a tiny space. And when you have a lot of people, you have a lot of social stress. Social stress is... Well, imagine doing an eighth grade math exam under time conditions while someone shouts at you. Now that is social stress. Now, if you were to pop yourself in an MRI scanner, you would have the exact experiment that Leda Borgen and colleagues did some years ago to see if there was a difference between city dwellers and country folk in their response to social stress. Spoiler alert, there is. The amygdala is more activated in city people than in country people. And the amygdala, which comes up a lot in these videos, is a subcortical brain structure which controls, amongst other things, depression and anxiety. So, it might be that the increased amygdala activity makes city dwellers more prone to depression. And in fact, that is exactly what an analysis of the medical literature had found the year before. So, city-specific depression could be caused by increased social stress operating through the amygdala from the sheer number of nearby people. And when you have a lot of people, you have a lot of pollution. And pollution comes in many forms. Chemicals in the air from car exhaust, bright lights from street lamps, and the endless roar of combustion engines day and night. So how bad are all these different kinds of pollution? Well, air pollution has been consistently linked to worse mood and to depression in humans and in animals. We don't actually understand how it works, but we just know that it does. A mechanism we do understand is light pollution. That's the brightening of the night sky through man-made lights. It's the reason that you can't see the stars in the city sky. Light pollution affects us too, and here's why. There are cells in our eye which sense light and use it to set our circadian rhythm. That's our sleep cycle. The center for circadian control is the suprachiasmatic nucleus. That's a little ball of brain cells which controls melatonin and glucocorticoid production. Those are hormones which control sleep and stress, respectively. Light above 40 lumens, that's about four candles worth, can throw it off, leading to worse sleep and increased stress. Now, the worst culprits for this are actually screens. I see you, all you bedtime binge watchers. But shop fronts and street lights aren't much better. Quick caveat, a number of the important studies in this field were done in hamsters. Now, hamsters aren't humans, I grant you, but they do have very strong circadian rhythms. Who knew? So what about noise? Well, studies have found that noise pollution is very annoying, certainly but it doesn't seem to have any serious long-term disorders. Finally, cities are very complicated and that makes them very attention grab. Unlike national environments, which are interesting without demanding attention, cities are gaudy and dangerous and exciting all of which is exhausting for our attention. At some point, the fun always becomes tiring. And the flip side to that is that if we feel like we can't handle the daily hustle, then we might start to feel a lack of control. And if we feel like we can't control our lives, then we may start to suffer from learned helplessness. And that is a model for depression. So, cities are busy, they're polluted, and they're complicated. And any one of these can make us feel unhappy. But there is a reason that so many people live in the city. Employment, education, healthcare, culture. It's better in the city. So is there some way that we could make our cities a more joyful place to live? Well, 
Here's three suggestions from the academic literature. One, produce less exhaust. Inhaling poisonous fumes will make you sad. All the studies seem to agree on that. Two, go for a walk in the countryside. Or more specifically, go for a 90 minute walk in the green space outside Stanford University, California in the year 2014. One study found that this decreased the amount of brain activity in the brain area responsible for ruminative thinking, and that's often active during depression. Or, if you live in Japan, you could try some Shinrin-yoku. That's forest bathing. It's basically the same thing, except the evidence for it is a lot less clear. Three, bring the green to the city. Urban green spaces have been shown to improve social cohesion and to decrease stress, as shown by the stress hormone cortisol. In fact, on the Robert Taylor Housing Estate in Chicago, when they planted trees, it improved neighborhood ties and it made people feel safer. Our cities are humanity's future home. We should probably try and make them nice places to live. For Inside Science, I'm Ali Jennings. Thanks for watching. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.